Thank you. Time back on. Let's wrap up. Welcome back to the captain's run. Uh, we've got week three. I've been given three weeks. Um, hopefully some more. Um, we're literally taking the Melbourne website by storm. We've had Spotify calling. We've had SoundCloud calling. We're not sure which way we're going to go. But I've gone back to my original host because Lever brought absolutely nothing last week. So I've gone back to, to Angus Brayshaw. Angus, welcome back. Thanks for having me. I didn't want to say anything week one when I didn't get the call up and I saw it was Rick Lever. I prepared myself mentally for this week. And yeah, I mean, I didn't listen to last week. Who did really? Uh, you see the headline of Rick Lever into BT. You're not thinking, no one's thinking fireworks. Maybe yep. you get a little from BT, but it's good to be back. Um, I've sterilized the mic, so there's no Rick yep. essence left on it. And uh, I'm ready to go. It's a big week we've got one. Up. It is. We do have a big guest today, uh, a big big couple of guests, uh, including finishing off with our Melbourne supporter again, and we'll go through some trivia. Uh, we've got a new prize that we'll talk about later as well for the for the trivia guest. We've changed the prices up uh, during the week, but we finally got a sponsor, I think, so I'm looking That's forward me. to announcing that. Sure. Um, first of all, uh, let's address uh, the elephant in the room. Did you follow that guy back from week one? That's the elephant. No, I said I'll do it when I get back to Melbourne. So I'll follow okay. him back in 2023 when we get back. I'll do my fact check. That's all right. Uh, we've had a hub change. Yeah, that is an elephant. Yes, that is the elephant in the room because we're in a completely new room. Uh, it's a little bit oversized for the podcast. It is, <laughs> it is. I'm talking about 15 metres by 50. Yeah, I'd say conservatively 15 by 50. And it's about five metres high as well. The roof, big ceilings, big ceilings. So if you are hearing an echo, we do apologise. But uh, we've moved to uh, Maroochydore. To be more precise, we've moved to Twin Waters. Yep. Um, your thoughts on the on the change of hub? Uh, Manly obviously helped us out to two wins. Yep. Are we going to do the same here? I must admit I was a Sydney sceptic, having not spent a lot of time there, but fell in love with Manly. Uh, it's a beautiful place. Uh, but I was uh, thinking, I was talking to a few boys on the way up, this is... Um, this is a place where we do our pre-season camp and that's a that's a bad time for us physically. We just yep. get wrecked for a week. So I'm having a few remissions, like flashbacks, walking around the ovals and the grounds and stuff. So but it's a beautiful part of the world. Uh, we're in a really good spot next to a golf course and a beach. Um, and yeah, I think it's gonna be it's gonna be a good time for us. We've got eight weeks, I think, at the at the minimum. Nine, nine, I think. Nine. Nine. Okay. Well, finals hopefully gives us to thirteen sure. as well. Sure. Not so. knowing where finals is. We could be in Melbourne, we could be in Papua New Guinea, who knows? Yeah, I mean, yes, we potentially could be. So I'm um, not gonna correct you there because it's your show. I don't want to step on your toes. But um yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to the next nine weeks and uh, yeah, I'm loving I'm loving Twin Waters this time around. Well, on that point about it being my show, um, I understand it is called the Captain's Run. Yep. Um I think it's even the captain's run with Max Gorn. Yeah, so, so it's doubled down on me. Interesting um, phraseology. Obviously, with the disaster we had with Jake Lever last week, yeah, um, we don't want to uh, keep having those down in that dip in ratings. Sure. Um, obviously, with the talking points being a big podcast as well, um, which is literally just Benny Gibson and Simon Goodwin. Um, Who's the first one? Yeah, good, good, good question. Is our newsman? We call him the newsman here. Okay, news guy. Um, oh yeah, news guy rings a bell. Yeah, news guy. He's actually on the show a little bit later. News, the okay. news, the news guy. Um, sure. anyway, what I'm saying is, maybe we make you a permanent co-host. Well, um, that would I'd be first of all would be honoured. Uh, yeah. Second of all, a little bit disappointed that it has taken this long. I um, yeah. um you know, I'm now I'm fixing I'm sweeping up Jake Lever's mess, which yeah. which hurts a little bit. Um, after what we did week one, I thought that yeah. was really strong. So, uh, I'll talk to my people, but that's a, a, a tentative yes. Well, do we even put it maybe out on Twitter? I think that we do a little Twitter poll. <laughs> Well, do we want to embarrass Jake that much? I'm happy to. Let's, yeah. let's, well, let's it's not it. Angus v. Jake. It's Angus sure. v. A rotating co-host. Okay. We um, can always have guests coming. We can, we can have guests. We can talk to people. Yeah, yeah sure. 100%. Okay, let's bowl it. I'm All right, well, let's bowl it. And you're happy to do it? Yeah, sure. Happy to. Um, I mean, I've got nothing a, else to do. It'll be a volunteer gig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, we don't have, have... Can you pay me back in friendship? <laughs> yeah, I can. I can. We can start hanging out after yeah, the podcast. Sure, that works for me. Which Maybe I'm looking like forward to. <laughs> All right, we've got to talk footy as well. We'll get back to uh, you. I love the topic of you, but we're going to get to uh, to Hawthorne. Uh, we did just get a... Uh, I'm going to guess 40 points, but I don't know exactly. Yeah, neither. Um, win over Hawthorne. Uh, and the most talked about uh, thing, probably from the player point of view, is your left slipper. What, the, the, the one would I hit 55 metres out in front of Bailey Fritch? No, no, no. no we're talking about the five grubbers that yep. you hit. Uh, and I think it's potentially because 
main training this week uh, out in Blacktown, you brought two right boots yeah. and left two left bo- boots back in the hotel and you overcompensated with your right foot and your left foot didn't get the work. Is that true? That's a really, really good insight from you. I honestly yeah. hadn't put that together myself. Uh, what I would say is that I am uh, I pride myself on not making those sort of silly mistake training yeah. mistakes. That's a, that's a Clayton and Oliver Christian yeah, Petraka type mistake. You, you hear two right boots, you think Christian Petraka. He's done it again. He's done it again. Yep. It's track again. Yep. Uh, and I, when I realised, yes, I was flat because now what am I going to do for training? But I, I think what dawned on me was more the implications it had beyond football and and for the next i would say three or four days i was i was that right boot guy um yeah maybe i did overcompensate maybe uh i did try and kick too much on the left but um i think the only reason you're bringing it up is because i grabbed one to you specifically to be okay. precise yeah. well yeah so um next week I'll, I'll hit your lace out and and we won't be having this conversation beautiful last thing we got to talk about before we get to our big first guest sure uh one of our very good friends. In fact, we, we would you say we're probably a trio up here uh, in the in the hub? The there's, big porterhouse. There's three of us that hang out together, yeah. you, me, and the big porterhouse. Oscar McDonald, for those who aren't familiar. The form of Oscar McDonald. Uh, Do you want to know where it all started? Go on. Was uh, it track one a hard ball, flicked it out to me, yeah. and for the football astute amongst our listeners will remember, I just lobbed a handball out. 20 metres into space. To a running porterhouse. To a porterhouse with his chest out, <laughs> just striding. He took a bounce and yep. lays someone out. And I think that's the confidence that he needed. Um, yep. He's fired right up, hasn't he? He's played three games this year. Uh, the West Coast one was a loss, but played really well. And then these last two, um, I think he's really good for the rest of the back line down there. But um, one of the more loved people at our yeah. football club. Yeah, we're happy with him, aren't we? And it's good to see him playing well. Yep. Um, so we will get to our big first guest. Uh, we'll be back after this. Thanks to our co-principal partner and podcast sponsor, Zurich Insurance. For over 100 years, they've been insuring the people and things you truly love. And just like you, they truly love footy and they truly love the Ds. All right, welcome back to the Captain's Run. Uh, As I said earlier in the podcast, we do have a massive guest uh, today. Uh, Should be Melbourne's number one ticket holder. In fact, I'm not sure who is, so he should potentially look at (laughs) giving that offer. Um, He's potentially given away his identity with his laugh. He's he's broken rank early. (laughs) But we've got Hamish Blake. Welcome to the Captain's Run. I know you've heard a lot about it. Uh, Hello, how are you guys? Uh, So he called on two... Look, I, I expected to get the call um, from you, Maxi, and you too, Angus, but I, I figured like deeper into the hub, like when you were scraping the barrel a bit more. <laughs> yep. So to come on like this early in the season, like week one of Maruchidor, this is a huge honour. Yeah, I know. I was saving you. I wanted to do a, a bring you in face-to-face, but I feel like that might not happen until 2024 now. So yeah. we, had to, we, we had to bring you, you can, in. You can bring me in for the 200th anniversary of the club. <laughs> first, first question, I, I'm sure everyone's thinking it. Um, why are you a Melbourne supporter? What? Tell me, tell me how that's how that's happened. Um, well, do you know what? Funnily enough, like I grew up, I grew up in a pretty heavy Geelong household. My brother and my dad were like pretty heavily into the Cats, yep. and I, I mean, this is nothing against the Cats. I've got I've got a lot of respect for them as a team. But I just <laughs> never was that into the Cats, but at the same time, I didn't feel I, I wasn't bold enough to like plant my foot firmly on another team so yep. I just wasn't like I just wasn't like crazy about football as I was growing up like I liked it and played and we mucked around and stuff with AFL but just never was that into it but then um, Maxi you know obviously you had a lot to do with the great Jim Steins and, yep. and I, I did a bit as well growing up through Reach and mates that I had in Reach and and really, I probably just started getting into footy a bit later on in life. So it wasn't until I was sort of like in my early 20s that I was like, all right, let's, I'm, I'm getting more into this and this seems a bit weird that I don't have a team. Yep. And so I became a D supporter. And uh, and I think it was just a natural progression from, from, from knowing Jim. So I joined... I joined the bandwagon at a great time to test my passion. Um, yep. You know, sure. a good it's been, a, it's, it's in the been last a great decade years, for and, us. Uh, I haven't regretted it. I mean, I mean, heartbeats <laughs> true. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's an interesting question about your early days memories. They won't necessarily be from an early age, but can you remember? the first sort of year or two that because I remember Jonesy in 2006 played finals I'm not sure if that's around your genesis as a demon supporter yes that was that was just 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 happening yeah. um, as uh, as we were getting into it so that that's about yeah that that's my 
Jonesy and I would have fond memories yep. of that finals finals <laughs> campaign. <laughs> not not till, not till then again, twenty eighteen. Um, but yeah, that was that was that was early days. Um, you, who did you guys? I never asked. Did you always go? Who did you guys go for growing up? Uh, I was I was a Richmond supporter. Um, really? Yeah, and look, we came ninth every single year, so I was quite happy to get out of Richmond. But now yeah. they seem like they're um <laughs> they're, they're going okay. Yeah, they do seem that way. I was a Fremantle supporter, Ham. I was born in West Australia, so yeah, of um, course. And bef- the year before I got drafted, Frio lost to Hawks in the grand final, so I got I, got, I was nearly there, but um. Yeah, not quite. Just that year of that year, of course. Then, are you uh, implying that you knew Angus was born in Fremantle? You must. Well, I remember you knowing know. the Brayshaw family had come from Fremantle. I mean, I, it wasn't immediately coming up as I did my Terminator scan yeah. of <laughs> Angus, but then I remembered. Oh, yeah, that's right. I, I, yeah. I've, I've seen. I, I, I'm familiar with like. You know, loose. I don't know the street you grew up in, but Are you I, sure? you know, I, know, I knew which side of the country you came from. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. cool, cool. <laughs> um, do you have Do you have a current favourite player, like, or a, or a former favourite player? Who are you? Who are you? Maybe one of each, current yeah. and former. Look, um, uh, all right. Well, let's go. Let's go, current. I mean, it's it's. Look, you know, my, my little boy and I, we're, we're pretty big fans of yours. Um, Thank you. Gorney, I mean, Thank you. Oh, jeez, <laughs> oh, that just I got mean, awkward. <laughs> well, it is, it is awkward, but I mean, for Sonny too, I mean, Sonny's met Maxi, so yeah. it's a, um, you know, like it's a pretty it's a pretty tough one. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty, I get it. Pretty you don't have to explain <laughs> it. I get it, man. It's all right. Well, I mean, it, it's, it's tough when you're like, it's tough when you've got a little boy who looks at the TV screen and yep. goes, oh, that's uh, that's my friend Max. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, so you can't you can't go. No, I don't know, mate. You know, let's let's pick another player. But also, like, <laughs> I reckon, um, look, I reckon like Petrak is having a pretty crazy yes, season. Yeah. Yeah, he um, he's, he's, I mean, he's I, currently you guys, are, you guys are right there having yeah. a look. Um, yep, we are. He's, he's doing. He's doing. He's doing some pretty, pretty amazing stuff. Yeah, he is. He's unreal. One of my, I'm gonna say, my one of my favourite teammates. Um, I'm not gonna tell you who you came because I, I, we need to talk through this a little bit. Um, so your podcast, Max and I both listen and we love, um, well, this is a segment you're going to have to remind me exactly what it's called. I might get the wording wrong where hey, Andrew, Andy, sorry, um, <laughs> like, has distanced himself from the common, the common man. Oh uh, yes, well, it's become a bit of a, uh, it's become a bit of a theme on our podcast to, uh, to try and catch, um, catch Andy out, yeah. um, perhaps losing touch, <laughs> yeah. uh, losing touch with the common man, which, um, which, which can happen. Yeah, um, of course. um, but there are, I, I think we've found that it's – I mean, now it's got to a ridiculous stage where, like, every time Andy posts something on Instagram, like, he's, <laughs> he's like, every post is just, like, a wash with, like, yep. you know, oh, geez, you know, floor-to-ceiling floor windows must be very nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, as – if, if Andy puts out anything that he, where he's not like in rags, uh, he gets stung. Like, you know, without any material possessions whatsoever in the world, then it must be nice. But yes, look, I mean, Andy had a, has a golf simulator. Yep. Um, he has a he has a house with three ovens. If you include the pizza oven sure. outside, so must be nice. we have to. You know, you, yeah, it must be nice. You, you, yeah, it must be very nice. I mean, I can only imagine having that many options to cook something <laughs> on. So it. Um, yeah, that has become a big theme on the podcast. So, so the the question I've got for you here, and it's less losing touch with a common man. My my teammate's losing touch with himself. He's a he's a two rack lad, um, very dyed in the wool liberal. Um, his old man owns a tea plantation. Like uh, he, he studies commerce at Monash. Um, so and very, he'd, he'd have some supporters that <laughs> yeah 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 sympathise with that. Yeah yeah yeah. He's got plenty. But what what I'm finding uh, is that he's losing touch with himself. So he, he bought a house in Fitzroy. He's grown his hair out long and wears a headband. Um, he he uses keep cups. He's got about ten of them. Takes them everywhere he goes. And um and now he's bought a longboard, uh, Mal, and goes <laughs> surfing every second weekend. So I'm just wondering from your experience. I'm not going to name names. I don't want to out him here on the program. But yeah. I just want to let. Well, geez, a, a headband. Yes, yeah. it, it, it narrows it down. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not going to name names. He didn't just he didn't just play his first game, did he? Oh no, 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 no not quite. Wasn't, it wasn't Dogger Jackson. It wasn't Dogger. Okay, Dogger. I was like, I can't say, I can't, I can't say, Luke. Uh, you know, yeah. migrating from Turak. No, we'll, okay. we'll try to. I mean, we'll give you a clue. Like initials are uh, um, E Langdon. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if that gives it's, it away. It's but. almost impossible to decide. For, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that's. I think this can happen, and that's yeah. why. Maybe, maybe this is. You know, has. Uh, I mean, this the hub could be good in this sense. Like Marichidor yeah. could be good just to like break everyone out of. I mean, it's it's a lot less hipstery than Fitzroy, mm. but by yeah. the same token, he's probably out there surfing right see, now. Isn't he? See, see, I was I was walking home from dinner last night, and he's bought up those little uh, heater camping things. You put oil in them. 
turn up the heat and he's cooking his own tea on his on his back porch probably as we speak either that or surfing so any tips you've oh, got geez. yeah i know it, it's deep it's deep and i know that there's a melbourne grammar school boy in there with his um rm williams boots yeah. and the ralph polo well, in there six, somewhere. six six years ago his butler delivered his tea for him exactly and so now he's, he's, he, no. uh, and now he's now he's traded in his royal melbourne membership <laughs> yeah for for, for for a case of burnley a case of board he's, wax he's playing nine <laughs> holes of burnley so what tips do you have how do i bring him back <laughs> Look, you know, yeah, that's that's a tough one. I mean, he, what what can what can you do? I mean, look, I suppose it's this, it's a t- time in a young man's life where he's going to go out there, he's going to explore other options. But uh, you've <laughs> just got to have faith that eventually he will ditch the retro Ute or whatever he's bought, yep. he'll get back in a Range Rover. I think he has a retro right Ute, yep. and he'll yeah. return. Um, to only exercising at Faulkner Park yeah, or no. in a pinch, in a pinch, Como. Yeah. And that's it. <laughs> Fingers are crossed, mate. Fingers are crossed. Um, Fingers are crossed. I mean, it's a devastating, devastating blow. Um, uh, hey, can I can I raise a question here, Max? Yeah, I don't know it's how. not really sure. Not that's not really how it works, but I'm never sure. Go for it. Well, I mean, I, okay. Let me let me let me let me raise an area that if we want to discuss. Can we share our joint? Investment with the um, with the wider podcast audience here. <laughs> Angus, would, you, would you like to know about an investment that Max and I are involved in? <laughs> you can, yeah, you can bring, bring, bring it out. Speaking of speaking of, speaking of um, specialising in commerce. Yeah, I, I study commerce, mate. <laughs> I study commerce. So I'm, I'm, all, I'm all ears. All right, tell us if you think tell us if you think um, our return on investment's been positive here. <laughs> ROI. Um, <laughs> Um, Max and I have, uh, you know, we've got we've got a friend in, in common. Well, I mean, he started as my friend, but yeah. he has. It's a loose. Left, it's a loose term, friend. Sure. He's left ferociously to Max. Yeah. He loves Max. Sure, <laughs> that's okay. Um, a young man called Aaron, and he, he, Max and I did. We did. A, we did three peaks, which some people might be familiar with. It's a big bike ride. I'm a cycler. Um, I know. Yeah, so yeah, right. So Dan and Tassie, we did the Tassie Three Peaks a few years ago. Yep. Um, Aaron, not an athlete, but he decided um, that it was an adventure too good to miss out on. And he came and drove the support van yep. for us in Three Peaks. And for anyone that's done Three Peaks, it's a it's a long it's a one day. day ride. It's yeah. like about two hundred and thirty k's. You don't really have a support van. Sure. No one. We didn't actually think of this before we went, yeah. but no one else had one. Team that had a support <laughs> of in a Ford Transit <laughs> with a lot of energy bars in the back. But anyway. He did an outstanding job that day. I think we we can all agree on that. It yeah. was a credit to the team. But he's a, he's he loves horses, and so he really wanted Maxi and I to go in on a horse with him. Oh, yeah, I know where this <laughs> is going. Yeah. Now, yeah, yeah, he I mean he, he spooked us with the price. I won't say how much it was, but sure. it was kind of casually mentioned. Do you guys want ten percent of a horse? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and I and then he said to me, look, Maxie's in. Are you in? And he said to Maxie, look, Hamish is in. You've got to be in. So we both <laughs> sort of got tricked into being into the, in this. Horse. We found out how much it was, and we went, mate, no way, we're paying that. I think Max and I went like two and a half percent each or something. Like, yeah. So not a lot, but enough. <laughs> enough. Five percent maybe each. Enough to have you're interested. Some level of interest. Yeah, sure. We we won. The, like it did didn't do anything on the mainland. Couldn't like just couldn't get us act together. Um, you know, we sent it to the country, sent it to New South Wales, maybe running the other way, would cure it, nothing <laughs> no, happened. No. Then, it, then, it, then it went to Tassie and started running in Tassie. Yep. Then didn't it, didn't it go to artificial turf yeah. in Tassie, Max? That's when you know <laughs> a horse has really made it, when it's on the artificial <laughs> stuff in Tassie. Jeepers. <laughs> <laughs> so not looking great I mean, at the moment. Yeah, just r- running wasn't at sport. Like it was so close to picking up horse tennis or something. Like just as like a different sport that it yes. might want to try. Yeah. And then, then it like got an entry into the Tasmanian Derby. Yeah. Wow, that's a lot. It won the Tassie Derby. Sure. So now, yeah. we're, now it's looking good, isn't it, Angus? Well, yeah. Where to next? That's well, that's it. Suddenly, suddenly the rest was flying. Right. Yeah, so exactly. we can't believe it. I. I was like, well, I know we've only got like 15 or 20% of this horse, but, you know, can we get the cup for one night? We can all have a dinner at my place or something and drink out of the cup or whatever you get for winning the Tasmanian Derby because none of us could actually make the race, but we could all watch it. Sure. <laughs> and then and then, um, and then, then it returned a positive swab. Oh, no. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Well, a bit- <laughs> <laughs> that's a bit of a downer. <laughs> so from an investment point of view. Yep. Where I've are just, we looking I've at been crun- I've been crunching the numbers as you've been going through <laughs> your story. Uh, look, I think if, it, it sounds to me as though you're about break even. The yep. Tassie Derby seems as though that initial mm. investment. Well, we haven't probably... seen that money because of the positive swab. Yeah, right? should, so, should point wow. out. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Like mm. a lot of sports, if you do return positive, <laughs> let me to give you let me, the prize. Let money. me let me just recalculate. Uh, <laughs> you pro- it, 
look, I'm not a massive horse guy. I'm not a, I don't, I don't know the tracks. I don't know who runs which way, but I, I do know numbers. And uh, <laughs> yeah. you're, um, it would appear to me as though you've got a negative balance on the horse at the moment. Got a negative yeah. balance. It did leave a bit of taste, didn't it, Max? It left it a did, bit of taste in did. their mouth. Um, I mean, I don't know what sort of taste it left in the horse's mouth. I don't know if this was, <laughs> no, I don't know if this was medicine he was taking orally or with a needle. I should point out to you, it was. At first, I just went, geez, this looks terrible. Yeah. Especially for you, Max. Like, yeah. I was like, you know, Max, he's a, he's a professional athlete. Yeah, he's yeah. got a great look. He's associated with a horse that's returned a positive swab. I yeah. should point out, it, it, of all the swabs you could get back positive, it appeared to be the most innocent one. It was like an, an anti inflammatory drug that, that uh, he still had a week before or whatever and then hung yeah. around. Yeah. So at least it wasn't anything like wildly illegal. It was just an unluckily timed mm, piece yeah. of legal medicine. Yeah. Anyway. The rules are the rules, and so that's you, you know that's get the prize money. Yep. But I think I think un- unconsciously though, correct me if I'm here, wrong here, Maxie, because this is something we haven't talked about. That was sort of I was like, all right, well, I think our syndicates had its fun, but <laughs> you know, I wasn't racing to get back into another horse <laughs> with Aaron. And then he sent around this thing last week. He's got another horse that's had a baby, it's had a foal, and he's like, right, who wants? 10% I'm selling 10% in the horse no I don't I don't think anyone replied yeah he has I, he I, has I, the I mindset has he been hassling you he has the mindset of when uh, when one horse has given you trouble just dig deep and go again and find another <laughs> which I don't think we share it just means you're closer to the good horse so <laughs> here's what I here's what I want to tell you though actually I mean long 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 way to get around to this I, I wanted to know from you how much Aaron's been pestering you to get involved in this new horse because he he obviously wants it for the social aspect. Yeah. And I went back with a flat no. I said, mate, I'm not interested in another horse. <laughs> How, I think you'll enjoy this. Because two nights ago, he sent me a message going, hey, mate, um, you know, he needed some other favour. Yep. And he went, by the way, you're in on the horse. I'm shouting, <laughs> goes, I'm sh- I'm shouting you. Oh, I haven't, I haven't got that one yet. <laughs> right. So, but then I wrote back, please don't. <laughs> I'm not interested. Please don't. He goes, what do you mean? You can't reject you can't reject a shout. Yeah. You can. Watch I me, I can. <laughs> I don't want to be aligned to positive swabs from here on in. <laughs> I, mean, I think my question to you guys is like, you can reject the shout, right? Like, <laughs> you can reject the gift. I just, I, I don't want anything tying me to another horse. <laughs> I think from an ideological perspective, you have to reject it. Yes, Otherwise, you do. You do. It, it says something that I don't think either of you want said about you. Um, I, think, I think we've got to make a stand right, but it's an interesting <laughs> manoeuvre when someone comes up and goes... It's a power move, I've dare bought, I say. I've bought this for you. Like, well, I've, <laughs> it's like someone just going, I've, 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 just so you know, I've, I've bought you into you know, the Yakuza. I was like, well, I don't want to be involved. <laughs> <laughs> it's a real power move. It is. Uh, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's I really think he's in it for the wrong reasons, mine, for mine. Um, I don't know what the wrong reasons are, but I think he is. Um, I, I've got one oh, more. I, oh, I know how to avoid, I know how to avoid further catastrophe, which is just stay yeah, away yeah, from just stay, stay away, away from it's, horses. Yeah, it's almost um, just not replying the to the email. I mean, the other question I have for you guys, just generally, was how is Marucci doing? I think the, I think the listeners of the podcast would want to know how's things going. Um, yeah, it's 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 beautiful. We actually um, discussed this off the top, but I'm more than happy to discuss it with you again. Um, Han, <laughs> Sorry, I was uh, on hold. <laughs> no, it is it is um, it's it's a beautiful place. We come up here for camp uh, once every year. Yeah, that's um, what I was thinking. Is yeah. it better than Manly because it's a bit more familiar? Uh, I think it's a bit worse because we went to the Oval where uh, we train in preseason and are habitually hurt by the training staff and now we're back yeah. there for a like a, a warm-up like lap and a, a light kick and i, I feel yeah. like I, everywhere i look is just bad memories we're just me. not sure about it we're waiting for our wrestling coach just to pop up yeah. around the corner and exactly. say i'm back <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> that sort of thing <laughs> but um no it is manly manly was beautiful um we were on the 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 best part of the street um able to see the beach and go get coffees and twin waters we're a little bit far away from some stuff but it's still sunny and still probably a little bit better than where you are I am in Victoria. Yes. Um, just just every day waking up, reading the numbers, it's a bit grim. It yeah. kind of reminds me like when you're in – when you do a TV show and you get the ratings every yeah. morning, like that's how TV works. Of course, sort of yeah, like I know. Around, uh, yeah, around about yeah. 9 o'clock, like you start – you start getting them drip fed yep. and they like officially come out at 9.30 but someone at the network kind of begins to see the overnight numbers and text, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. text messages. Someone leaks, someone leaks. And it's like really where you know. You kind of know if at, like at, if at 8.55 the head of the network's texting you. Yep. You know it's great yeah, because they can't, <laughs> they're like they're like stoked because something terrific's happened. Yep. 
And if it gets to about like half past nine and you haven't heard anything, oh. then you start to go, mm, <laughs> I don't know how things went last night. But it, it reminds me of this, but in a bad way where you just like, because everyone like reckons they know someone that knows someone that's in government yep. and people are on WhatsApps and stuff everywhere. There's you leaking getting, going on everywhere. In there's there. leaks and you start mm. getting, you start hearing rumors of 300s, 400s and it's just like a real shit version of getting the ratings every day. <laughs> Um, we do have we do have one more, um, actually two more. We'll finish on one, but this this is a point. Oh, so I don't think I don't think I even did I say who, I mean who my previous great players were. I mean, I'm, no, you mentioned I, Jimmy I, at the start, sorry, so I, I mean, presume I Jimmy. Go, I feel like I I feel like I have to mention Jim. Yeah, and, but then also Jeff Farmer. I mean, you got to you can't play the wizard. Yeah, yeah, Jeffy. He was a yeah, star. wizard. Um, he Thanks got, for the answer. He long actually, answer. he's a sorry, w- sorry, long answer. I told you a twenty-minute story about a horse that we had cheated, and then I said, "I got back to Jeffy." What we so I just wanted to bring up something that Angus has been doing uh, throughout his uh, high school and years. Um, yes, he has. He has three brothers, but two of them have the name Hamish and Andrew. Which um, uh, doesn't take a rocket in, scientist hand. Yeah. Western, Western Australia. I'm not sure if you knew that, uh, Angus, but that's where the boys up. <laughs> and through high school, he was living off the curtails of uh, saying his brother was Hamish and oh, Andy. Yep. Of course. Instantly. This is the first thing. It's a big school, Halebury. I went to Halebury. And a lot of people, a lot of people I didn't know. And you, it was around the time you and Andy were really popping off. So I'd walk in and there'd be the casual small talk, you know, how you going, this and that. And I'd say, oh, yeah, Hamish and Andy, my brothers. And then that would instantly take me up a few notches. So, um, <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> I mean, obviously, like, no one thought it was us. Well, I, you'd be surprised. Not, I was like, wait. You reckon some people thought uh, we think we are brothers? I definitely gave them pause to think, like, wait, what? <laughs> Hamish and Andy? And I'd be like, <laughs> no. Great. No. And, I mean, it, it's not a bad one to drop and then – pretend you have to be somewhere else yeah. so you can plausibly go like oh yeah Hamish and Andy my brother sorry no I've got to go I'll come back I'll catch up with you in a second yeah. so you at least give them like 10 minutes to think about it yeah I never yeah. corrected I never corrected anyone it was almost like uh, yeah not quite on that level I, I must profess I, year 8 me wasn't on that level I just was sort of using it to get a foothold in the school and and um, for that I probably owe you a thanks oh mate but, I mean that's what you do I mean I'd say total pleasure I'm, I'm obviously I'm, I'm, I feel like I can speak on behalf of Ando here so we we're honoured to have been able to help out <laughs> Um, a young Angus, but I mean, that's the kind of shit you do in your eight all the time. Though. Yeah, like, absolutely. I, yeah. I remember telling people at high school that my dad played table tennis for Victoria because I, I think I genuinely thought he did. And <laughs> he, he played table, I mean, he played table tennis in Victoria, but yeah. he didn't play table tennis for Victoria. Yeah. But There's I a bit of a distinction. He just has a table at home, doesn't he? Yeah, I mean, I think I just confused the story where my mum, looking back on it, she was obviously like saying it sarcastically and disappointingly just going, well, all your dad did at, at uni was play table tennis. <laughs> and she was sort of like going, you know, geez, you know, he played all tennis for Victoria, kind of like as if that's how much time he was putting into it. But I think I missed the sarcasm. And then that sure. was like my claim to fame growing up that dad made the state team. Did it he work did for not. you? Did it work? Well, I mean, looking back at it, I should have picked a cooler sport yeah. to brag about. <laughs> because, like, even if he did play table tennis for Victoria, I don't know how many babes will come running no. when they go, geez, have you heard heard about the new kid? <laughs> <laughs> His dad played table tennis for Victoria in the 60s. Oh, that's 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 very good. We'll let you go because we, uh, we've probably taken up a little bit of your time today. Uh, it was an absolute pleasure, boys. Um, how, what's, what's, I mean, I don't know when this is, rec- I mean, I know when it's recorded. It's yeah, recorded right It's recorded now, today. Yeah. Goes out. What have you got on for the rest of the day? What's your schedule like? Uh, we got our day off today, which is quite good. Um, yeah, yes, we can't really do anything. So our day off is quite boring, but uh, my bike, seeing, my bike arrived lot, in the mail. I see a lot of gym stuff on yep. Instagram. Yeah, That's good. That. Yeah, uh, the, ins- the, Instagram, the Instagram guy has been a little bit trigger happy up here and he's posting a lot, but it's good. It's good to give back to yeah, the fans the back in Melbourne. People need content. That's good. The golf yeah. I see a lot of I see a lot of pre like during workout stuff. Are you conscious that that guy's taking the photo during workouts? Acutely conscious. Well, we have. He's actually in the in <laughs> awkward in the room. Uh, our big social media man Matthew Goodrope. We we feel like he puts up the photos of us on his wall. Yeah, um, it's that sort of setup. <laughs> that's where that's where it go it goes. So it's a bit awkward on our end. Because I mean, yeah, they they they're like quite candid shots. Yeah. But, you know, it's often someone like during like a yes. bench press or something. Yeah. And and I was wondering like if it has a positive or a detrimental training effect or just neutral. I'd say absolutely detrimental. Detrimental. 100%. Because yeah. it, would, it would rattle you for a rep. 100%. Yeah, it would. Like, 
take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. <laughs> the effort, people, people have a uh, really distinct effort face when they're pushing for a hard rep as well. And, and yep. that often doesn't come up great on camera unless you're Sam Weedman. So um, that, that, that stuck, stitched me up a few times. Max, I'm not sure. Track's got a real bad one. Yeah, yeah, yeah I was going to say, is, is anyone, um, you don't have to name names here, but just oh, we I want you to pri- privately think about this yeah. and then just give us a yes or no. Yeah. Do you reckon there's anyone that, visibly lifts their effort for when they know the social media cameras are floating around in the gym. I dare say that that defines Christian Petraka yeah. is what yeah, you're saying. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. He deviates oh. from the program to do <laughs> biceps and triceps What when the camera comes out. We don't have that scheduled in, but he fires right up. That's an absolute yeah, yes great. from yeah, great. My Last question on, on the gym stuff. Yep. I mean, track in particular, like everyone looks like they're in pretty good nick this year, but track in particular, he's like he's 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 come back as a bit, bit of a monster. Mm-hmm. He's um and you too a bit, Maxie. I'll I'll give you I'll I'll, you. I'll and, throw that and, out and there. And me three. Thanks very much. <laughs> and you three. <laughs> Thanks, Sam. Appreciate and, it, mate. And who else? I suppose Simon's looking good. I mean, for an old bloke. Yeah. Um, yeah. Simon is looking um, good, actually. <laughs> he's looking great. Yeah. No, but you, you too, Angus. I mean, everyone's Jeez, very strong. No, oh, um, thanks, mate. Appreciate oh, it. Oh, sorry, mate. <laughs> <laughs> means, the, means the most coming from you. I know that. I know that's authentic. <laughs> Bicep. Let me just ask you a quick question. Yeah. Biceps. Sure. How important are they to train for the actual sport of AFL? Or is there, an, is there, a, is there a sum amount that's just because, you know, you don't have sleeves? when you play? Um, I would say uh, they have very little to do with absolutely anything got to do with Australian rules football apart from looking good. And if you look good, you feel good. And if you feel Feel good, good, you play play good. good. It's a psychological edge. I'll take that. And also you brought up sleeves. There's only one bloke who wears sleeves consistently at our club. And I don't want to circle back to Ed Langdon, (laughs) but but here we are. (laughs) Yeah. And he wore a collar if he could do. (laughs) Oh, thanks, Ham. Oh, God. Uh, thank you, boys. Keep it up. Yeah. Loving uh, loving the pod. Thanks for having me. No thanks, worries. Man. Hopefully back in Melbourne and we can watch a game at the G. Preferably be a final this year. Yeah, I get a bit sad when I look at my calendar because I had all the home games penciled in. And yeah. So you can't keep seeing them come up on a Saturday. <laughs> uh, yeah. What a shame. Oh, no. What a shame. All right. Good, man. Good stuff, guys. Thanks, keep it up. mate. Legend. Uh, this is my favourite part of the captain's run. Uh, we've had Colin Garland. We've had Cameron Pedersen. Um, I literally just go through my phone, try and find a past player's phone number. Um, I actually didn't have this guy's phone number. I had to ask someone for it. But um, we've managed to get one of the best ruck combinations you'd ever seen, Angus Brayshaw. Yep. Through 2013. Max Gorn and Jack Fitzpatrick put four games together, which was none like no other ruck combination. Fitzy, are you there? Absolutely, I am, mate. I got excited when you said your favourite because I thought you meant your favourite past player, but Ooh. you then let me down and told me you've already deleted my number. Yes, and, and third on the list as well, called Colin Garland and Cameron and Pedersen, Pedersen before you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It must be noted. Look, I, I didn't want to... I didn't want to bring that up. I mean, I'm assuming there's some form of sympathy thing with Galo being from Tassie and um, <laughs> Pedo's, I don't know, something about Pedo having a bigger nose than me, maybe. I don't really know. That's, yeah, that that. that's uh, Just quickly, before I'll let you ask the question, I know Gus came first to a couple of years ago. If me and you were the combo, he would have won it, by the way. Yeah. 100%. Were the um, votes. They, you were the votes I needed to get across the line. Unfortunate for you, mate. So yeah. anyway, I'm not having this shit. You are, boys. Uh, yeah, I'm. Well, I'm glad we gave you some time to ask a question. It was a really good question. Yeah, thanks um, for the insight. Now, look, we're gonna we're gonna talk footy first, which me and you don't normally do. Uh, to be fair, um, Jack and I have a quite silly relationship, Angus. But um, sure. I'm gonna ask a serious question first up. You um you retired uh, a bit prematurely, um, although I thought you would have got delisted, but you. <laughs> You prematurely retired, uh, and it was from the result of multiple concussions. Um, on a serious note, we obviously have Angus here, um, who's well known for his concussions early in his career. How are the concussions hold, holding up, and are you allowed to play footy? What are you allowed uh, and not allowed to do? I didn't realise this was going to be a serious interview, Max. But uh, uh, just the one, just the one. Um, no, as, as Gus knows, well, it's, um, it's not, not a great thing to be getting through, and I guess it's far out of our realms of, of knowledge and understanding, really. I mean, we obviously know how we're feeling, um, but apart from that, we're not the doctors or the specialists, and, um, you know, the brain is something you don't know a lot about, and it's something that I probably put... I mean, I'm fortunate I've never had issues with mental health, but um, I've put a long time in the fact that I'm sure there are still some people out there who are with 
you know, it doesn't happen. How bad can it be? Because it, it's invisible. It's not like it comes up on a scan. It's purely down to how you're feeling. Yep. But um, how I'm going, um, yeah, I'm, I'm okay, mate. As you said, 2017, I was told by the docs that I had to retire. Yeah, just, you know, to protect my brain, basically, and no longer play contact sports. So um, my initial question was, well, that's fine. Can I just play like Kale Morton for the rest of my career? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and, what? Um, unfortunately, they said no, not quite. So, yeah, that's meant no footy, mate, and that's at local or, you know, state level or, or at the top level. So, um, obviously, we were drafted together and blokes like yourself and, you know, who else is dominating from our draft? Scales, scales are still going. Whatever else. So, um, it would be good to still be playing, but I guess at the end of the day, it is about protecting your head because we've only got one of them. And yep. whilst I would love to be playing footy, the reality is you've only got one brain. And um, I think deep down, I probably knew it was the right thing, which made it a little bit easier. But um, not good for the dad bod, particularly during isolation, mate. <laughs> <laughs> we, we were going to go for the Gorn Fitz combo early. You've already ticked that one off. Um, we were interested because the move to Hawthorne from Melbourne happened late and you obviously were instantly uh, put as a cult hero for that snag you kicked in the MCG in the brown and gold. Who do you who do you actually go for? We were, we were wondering if uh, your allegiances might have changed from the Ds. Yeah, look, I, I grew up a Hawthorne supporter and I was a pretty tragic Hawthorne supporter. Okay. I went to Best and Fairest, so I... Was a, you know, a 12 year member, all those kinds of things. There's, a, so, there's, there's actually a great um, photo of you and Robbie Campbell in there. Yeah, there's a few, photo of me and a few of the guys. And I, I still remember um, putting a photo on MySpace back in the day yeah. after the 2007 Best and Ferris. So I got a photo with Clarko. Yeah. The caption was hopefully me and my future coach. Um, <laughs> Here you go. How about that? I'm, I'm glad that uh, I can't dig up the, uh, I can find the photo, but I can't dig up my old MySpace password. So look, I obviously have a soft spot for the Ds. What do you reckon was your password? Sam Mitchell 2 or something? Five. What's that? Sorry, mate. What do you reckon your password was? Sam Mitchell 2? No, look, probably not. It was probably, yeah, it could have been anything. I actually <laughs> don't know. I can tell you my old uh, email address is fitzy underscore is underscore dot underscore one. That's what that's <laughs> Is that um, what, what's, what's, what's your new one? Is it something similar? Uh, well, I can't tell that. Can't tell that out, mate. People will just soon before that get my uh, date of birth off the internet and be getting into my bank account. Yep, go on, one. go so, on. Uh, I won't be going with the new one, mate. But uh, yeah, no, look, it's, uh, I, my favourite part of that is that I didn't even go with that one. It was da, D-A. Yeah, um, sure. Yeah. Like 50 cent in, in that club. But, um, sure. Right, get back on anyway, point. Look, I, I have to admit, I, I do, I'm, I'm more in the Hawks side of things okay. um, as a club point of view. But the funny thing is, you know, spending six years at, at Melbourne versus two years at Hawthorne, you, you probably do build closer relationships with the guys you spent more time with. So yeah. I'm probably closer with the individuals at, at the club or, or the ones that are left anyway, and I can't say there are too many. Yeah. But in terms of an actual club, I I'd certainly Hawks first, soft spot for the Ds. Um, and, and yeah, now the, now the Bulldogs, mate, that, that I'm involved with the women's team. Yes, that yeah. was that was the next, the next question. You could almost can ask it yourself, but obviously when footy got taken away from you through concussion, um, you went to Werribee, uh, you decided to do some, uh, some ruck coaching and then turned into the midfield coach and then, according to you, turned into the, to the real deal coach um, and then have managed to move your way to Western Bulldogs uh, AFLW team. Um, and are you, are you still there? What's your role there? And is AFLW even going to go um, ahead this year? It sounds like it will. It sounds like the competition won't be affected, which is good news, but um, tell us about that. Um. I, one thing I will say, I know we, you and I don't talk a lot about footy, but I think it's fair to say that when we were playing, or we did become pretty good students of rut craft in particular, and I like to think we are students of the game. I always thought that following footy and understanding footy was something that um, was a strength of mine, and yep. a lot of people who watch me play might disagree with that, Gorny, <laughs> yep. but um, I would say that that was a strength. So even though I didn't have ambitions of coaching, to be honest, when I was playing, um, the fact that um, I was taken, footy was taken away. It was another way to get that team environment, be around people. And I was really fortunate that, really fortunate that I grew up in Werribee as a local guy. And they approached me after I um, retired and, and asked if I'd like to do some coaching. So I was actually yep. the match day runner for my first year there, which <laughs> was kind of weird. Because, you didn't, you didn't you know, exactly well, fit, fit, fit the t-shirt they gave you. <laughs> No, mate, that wasn't the most flattering thing of all time. I'm sure you'll probably get a photo out of that. But, uh, 
a couple of guys might have taken. Imagine the generic size that you have being a small though. Like yeah, you know, I know. Surely the generic is a large. Uh, but, you've, yeah. Have you seen the runners? Shannon Burns is our runner. We had to get him an extra, extra small. <laughs> I, I digress on that one, Max. Um, but that was great. And then sort of stepped from, you know, being a specialist ruck slash tools coach and, and match day runner onto um, being the mids coach last year. And look, I don't want to take too much credit, but... <laughs> I went from a guy by the name of Tom Gribble polling about two votes in the Liston medal the year before, and then I become the mids coach, and he wins the Liston under my coaching mate. So, uh, you know, um, you don't want to take too much credit, don't. but you have. Um, and much like Jay says in the in between and stuff like that doesn't go unnoticed. Yeah, Neil, when he's talking great. about great quote. Um, You've, I didn't realise an in between us quote would get its way in, but good work. So, Fitzy, I was um, just you. Just before you mentioned something about being a student of the game, I'm flipping through the student of the game manual and I'm looking for the tunnel ball page. <laughs> yes, I, Angus. I can't yeah. find it exactly. For those who don't remember, Fitzy <laughs> tunnel balled it through. Was it against the doggies? No, nah, Collingwood. Uh, no, nah, against the Pies. Got Queen's birthday? Got me sacked. Yeah, that yeah, was a big got, day. Um, never never played again to the Ds after that. So, um, that's your fault, by the way, Max. If you had to spoil the ball through instead of gone for a mark in the first place and, and dropped an absolute pud, yeah. we wouldn't have been in I do understand that I didn't. That was a horrid. I understand that I didn't do my role, but you still threw the ball through your legs. Like I, yeah, I, I get no. I didn't do my bit. Horrid umpiring decision. <laughs> I still Is that, um, that's what we're going with. It's horrid. just a, be, it's, it's just a yeah. blue from the umpire. And I'm pretty sure you can go back and, and check this. I'm pretty sure the umpire, if you go back and watch it, he actually paid deliberate and not a throw. So it was a horrid decision. Yeah. Right. Um, what I what I do remember that day. Angus is, uh, I was playing at full back and, and also doing a bit of work in the rack and you teed me up for the last goal I kicked at the D's, you, you put it up and I pushed away that also ran uh, Scott Pendlebury and took a mark yeah. over him and then kicked a snag. <laughs> it was on my left foot as I recall as well, so I got a bit of feedback and, from Gorney early about my left foot and um, I'm glad to see that you remember some of my better work. Absolutely, mate. as I said, it was the last time I stepped on the G for the D's, so um, yeah, how could I not remember? It was funny though, I only played three games that year and Played it full back in all of them and kept my opponent goalless in two and still couldn't get a game. So that, obviously, well, I was doing something wrong. Is that the most games you played in a year? <laughs> no, our, our famous 2013, mate. I was uh, that my my so-called breakout year. Yeah. Uh, 2013. <laughs> I think it was have you <laughs> have you called it that? Um, I think it was called that at the time by the people in the media, and then I think yeah, okay, I got that okay. One if you you, sh- you show me the article and then I'll believe you. <laughs> Mate, I'm still living off uh, goals I kicked against the Bulldogs in that year from the boundary. And yep. I was just, else. mate, it's written down. I think you kicked more check side goals than drop punt goals. Is that true? <laughs> That's because even when I would try and drop punt, it would like <laughs> <a check side laughs> anyway. Oh, um, last, last question before we let you go. Um, again, again, getting back to serious. Um, I thought I'd finish off on a serious start of serious and get jokes in the middle. Um, you... You, you got the big three is what I like to call it. Um, unfortunately, with through your football, I mean, you got drafted with chronic fatigue, so um, you technically had that before you got drafted, but um, chronic fatigue, concussion and diabetes all through the game of AFL. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a show of your character, the, the way you're able to, to push through those three things. I remember some of the chronic fatigue things early on in your first and second year, how hard it was for you and then when diabetes um, came into the came into the equation around your third year and then concussion laid on in your career, it's such a hard thing to balance. And I think you were able to do that. And then as a really proud friend to be able to see what you did against Hawthorne. Um, how are you managing those three things? I did see you were um, you're in uh, the diabetes Instagram story the other day. I think you're in charge and haven't heard much about your chronic fatigue as of late. Um, how are those three things going? Firstly, Max, thank you very much. It's kind of you to say that. And uh, not often we get serious with each other. But no, look, I suppose it's just what you have to deal with. And, um, you know, the chronic fatigue was probably something I was fortunate that most of it impacted me during my teenage years. And, and the last couple of instances, um, you know, I think it was the end of our second year, start of our third year maybe, was the very last instance. So I try and get a good sleep in here and there and, and try and look after myself. But to be honest now, most of my stuff is, is looking after my diabetes. It's my sugar levels. It's... You know, I don't have a perfect diet these days, but what I'm eating, um, you know, trying to make sure I get enough exercise in, all these yep. kinds of things. Um, I was probably fortunate that the reality with diabetes, it's, uh, I don't want to play it down, but I also don't want to make it sound horrible either. But the reality with it is the best way to manage it is 
you eat well, you exercise well, you have a good regime and you're quite disciplined. And, and that's yep. exactly what AFL footballers do. So I was pretty fortunate that I was diagnosed with it whilst I was playing, mate, because yep. apart from having to start injecting myself with a few meals, uh, uh, with a few injections when I would eat, I should say, I didn't have to change a lot. Yep. Um, but, you know, now it's back in the real world, I guess, for want of a better word, and you've got to fit things like exercise in around work and, and you're not being paid to exercise and you don't have a doctor at work every day. Like, they're things that, you know, the real world people have to get into that I was probably fortunate that I was in the AFL bubble, for want yep. of a better word. So, you know, all that kind of stuff. It's a continual balancing act, mate, but, you know, whether it be retiring due to concussion, whether you want to or not, or getting diabetes, that you know, life is a pretty good thing. And a um, 100 years ago, mate, if, I got diabetes at the age of 21. I'd be dead already because they hadn't invented insulin. I think it's 100-year anniversaries either next year or the year after. So I'm just happy to be here, mate. And uh, every day I get the blessing. And as you know, I try and have a laugh at most of the time. And even though I find myself funny, you might argue that uh, I'm not as funny as I think I am. That's all right. <laughs> it's a strong argument of mine. <laughs> All right. Well, that's uh, that's a that's a that's a wrap. I think you finished that off really well. Um, nice to talk to you. Hope you're handling COVID uh, restrictions well um, and getting through life. And hopefully the doggies in the AFLW go well. Not as good as the demons, of course, but um, yep. it was good to have a chat. And we'll catch up soon, Jack. Thank you, boys. Enjoy hub life. Great work that you guys are doing, and well played on the weekend. You were very, very good. Good man. Cheers, Thanks. Dudes. Thanks, mate. See ya. That was Jack Fitzpatrick, uh, very good close friend of mine while I was at the club. We got yep. drafted together, uh, pick 34. He was pick 50. Um, we played Vic Metro together. He was actually, when he was 17, tipped to go pick one. You're joking. And he slid, to, he slid to pick 50. He had the worst what top age year I've oh, ever seen true. anyone have. Um, he got yelled at by the coach every single game. Um, what a steal. What a steal. Anyway, it, it's time. I mean, it's segments galore on this podcast. It feels like we haven't had time to chat ourselves, but That's okay. um, I think it's important to get the news. Um, yep. Do you, think, yeah, sure. Do you, do you remember how we brought it up? Well, I, I've got the first line. I think you got the first line. You got the second, go and then second, I go third. And you come over okay. the top to finish. All right, I'm ready. It's Benny Gibson. He's got the news. He's got the news. I think I've been pushed back to the second segment, have I, Max? Uh, well, it's a little bit... Um, it's a supply and demand uh, thing. The people want a little I mean, less news. Hamish Blake, Ben yeah. Gibson. Yeah, you just I got thought to you sort may of have put, up. put me later just to keep fans sort of wanting... Potentially wanting that. Potentially yeah. that. Um, I've seen, obviously, uh, your talking points and... Um, ratings not, through the roof on that one. Didn't get far through it, to be honest. Not, not many have. That's okay. <laughs> We're here now. What, what's the news? I don't have too much news. I yep. thought, better keep it short and sweet because I cut out about half of it in the edit last week. But first up, <laughs> Aaron Vandenberg, yep. unfortunately, will miss two games. He fractured his cheekbone. I think he played through he the did. pain. That was yeah. crazy. I'd, so, I'd, I'd, he four fractures in his face get in the first played quarter. the game. Second quarter, I think. Yeah, right. On. He's as tough as He's nails, tough and I, I do feel for him because he does have some bad injuries uh, at bad times. Yeah. Um, but this one sounds like it's going to be little, does it, Ben? Yeah, so if, at least it's not his foot. I think that's yeah. Yeah. generally what everyone's happy about. So two weeks, he can keep the body in good shape and then yeah. be back. Uh, Tom McDonald potentially could be returning. He'll have to get through training on Thursday from that eye injury. It'll be tough to squeeze out yeah. Jackson or Wiedemann. They've been in pretty good form, particularly last week. Yeah, look, um, it's a genuine... I'm presuming Aaron would be the only change, but I am not goody, so there could be another one as well. Yeah, um, who knows? Yeah, so who knows? Who but knows? I dare say Tomlinson, Jones, uh, Tom McDonald, um, Alex Neil Bullen, Jaden Hunt, these five guys that have played a lot of senior football and playing some, some really good scratch match football, which is unfortunately what they got to do. Um, those five could be going for one spot and they're all five different players. So yeah, I don't exactly. know which way they're going to go. There wasn't a practice match last week. Hopefully there will be one this week, if not definitely the week after. There are 11 players that were at home. They're coming up. At the moment, they're staying, I think, Southport to isolate for two weeks before they join the hub. So it'll be good to have the rest of the yes, team up here. It will. Um, you touched on, obviously, we're in... Maruchidor now, the biggest issue I'm finding is the walk from our actual room to the team room. You got your bike up here. Is that just for that little... Well, I, I, I tend to go for bike rides when I'm in Melbourne uh, during the week. So when I thought I've got to do what I'm doing at home, I said, I've got to get my bike up there. Um, I didn't realise we'd be in Twin Waters where my room is four kilometres away from the restaurant room. So. Seriously, a, that's a bit of hyperbole from Max. We yeah. call it the Max Tax, but it's a 10-minute walk for me. I don't know that word. Time. 
hyperbole. What is that word? An over exaggeration to make a point. So can you, you said, you said can four you just kilometers. Bring a basic level of English, please. You said, to these oh podcasts. god, it's four, four kilometers away <laughs> yeah. when it's clearly not four kilometers away. Yeah. Uh, that's called hyperbole. Okay. Um, but for those listening at home who want a serious metric, it's a it's a ten minute walk. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you know, breakfast, lunch, dinner, there and back is an hour. Yeah. Um, and over a week. For the mathematicians, seven times one is that's seven hours of walking, which doesn't sound like a lot, but certainly has the potential to add up. So, yep. scooters, Christian Matrack is out buying a Razor scooter oh. today um, yep. to help him out. Uh, you don't want to cut one of them on the ankle. That's dangerous. No, of course, no. there's the ankle uh, dilemma that you have yep. to deal with. Bikes yep. are an option as well. That yep. um, Kmart bikes. Yeah, there bikes. is there is some bikes up here as yeah. well. And it gets very annoying if you leave something. For example, I left my oh. my sponsor hoodie in my room, and then you pinched it, so I still don't have one on. Yep. But um, yeah, the walk is an issue, but we'll we'll get through that. The golf <laughs> clubs have arrived, so that's they a good have, result. They have anyone that can play golf. Um, Angus will tell you you can. Um, I'm looking I forward can. to that. I, what's I what's your best you. ever golf shot? Oh, don't, uh, Ben. Well, it's interesting you say that. I'll just w- go back through. We the don't files. actually have the time. Hamish just say, Hamish just give me the short story. Uh, pure than eight iron from 160. Yep. Light draw, bounce, bounce, check, roll, hole in one, five west, yep. roll Melbourne. Need I say any more? Bit that's more a, footy. That's fixed a hot drop date. for mine. Uh, <laughs> fixed drop date. We got it uh, Tuesday night. So we've got Port at the Gabba, Adelaide and Adelaide, North Melbourne at Blundstone Arena depending on whether the Tasmanian government let us in and then Collingwood at the Gabba. So the big one there is Adelaide to Hobart four-day break. Do you think we could potentially stay down somewhere and not have to come up to Brisbane in between? Yeah, we're sharing a hub with North Melbourne. They're in Twin Waters. Yep. Yeah. And I was thinking there's a paintball course here. Wow. Do we just contact the AFL and go, we're just going to go paintball instead? It's one less game you got to think about. Yep. Winner takes all. Yes. Um, and we'll tell you who the best players were. We'll send you the whatever happens. Brownlow votes. Brownlow votes. Uh, if you're wearing your helmet, spear. you'll no doubt get three. Well, everyone has to um, Everyone has to wear a helmet. So that's my <laughs> only factor. Yeah, so maybe you won't get the votes. So I'll get zero votes. Everyone, or everyone will get three votes. Who knows? No, no, but the draw is out and I'm, I'm looking forward to all those games. I couldn't care who we play and when we play. I just really enjoy um, playing football right now and uh, we're all really lucky too. So the... the the fact that we have to go to Adelaide and go to Hobart and two games at the Gabba, it's all just yeah. uh, noise, really. If we can squeeze a game in at Alice Springs or Darwin, we will have played in every state already this year, so that yeah. would be a good effort. Just go. lastly, Fun obviously, yeah. the Lions this weekend, Metricon Stadium, that's a, over a two-hour bus ride. Um, is that a challenge? Is it? It's not ideal, is it? Uh, it's not ideal. I, I, I live in the Mornington Peninsula, so I'd travel an hour and 20 to get to the G. Um, so it's not too bad for someone like myself. I do that quite normally. Um, but Metricon, two and a half hours. Apparently, the bus driver reckons Sunday traffic's the worst up here. Yeah, I've I've, ne- I've no idea. I'll wait till I see it. I'll, I'll, we might not be there by six oh five. We'll report when we when we see the traffic. Yeah, we'll um, talk about that next week. We yeah. got Burjo though. Smart people who will sort stuff out. I don't yeah. think a two-hour bus trip's much to worry about. No. Very good. That's all I've got. I think it was stronger than last week. I got some pretty harsh feedback from you during the week. So, I actually, um, my wife listens to the podcast. We might get her on one. Hi, week, Jess. Actually, hey, Jess, how are you? Um, Hope I'll, all's well. I'll try and call you sometime next week. It's busy, really busy up here. Um, <laughs> I saw you hang up on her during trivia the other night. <laughs> well, she knows not to call during trivia. Um, <laughs> Where was I? Oh, yeah, Something she said. About your wife, she, probably about she said, me. you've got to go easy on that news guy. My nanny said that as well. Yeah, so I'll go, <laughs> your nanny. Yeah. Now, that's made me upset. Uh, I don't okay. like I don't like annoying the senior citizens yeah. of the world. So, yeah, you dog. Um, I'll, I will go nicer on you. And uh, Angus, to be fair, was the one that went harsh on you first today. Yeah. And you you jumped right in <laughs> comfortably with so, a smile on sorry, your face. Sorry, Jess. Sorry, Nanny Gibson. Um, is that is it Nanny Gibson? Uh, close enough. Uh, okay. Um, and that is the news. Yeah. Uh, we'll be back after this with our favourite, uh, I'll say they're all my favourite segment, but the Melbourne supporter of the yes. week is coming up. This is our favourite. All right, Angus, it's time. Uh, I said it was my favourite segment. It's, it, it is up there. Um, yep. We did have Hamish Blake on today, which is right up there, but uh, this Melbourne supporter uh, got up asked to tweet in who should be playing uh, a former player. If we got to pick a former player, yep. who would it be uh, to play this week? Okay. Um, and I thought it was quite uh, trivial because we also had Jack Fitzpatrick on the podcast. It wasn't and, Fitzy, was it? And Kobe's answer, no. Kobe, who is here. You there, Kobe? G'day, Max. Hello. G'day, Gus. Your answer was to play Jack Fitzpatrick, was it not? It was. What, what, it was. what were you thinking there? <laughs> if you don't mind me asking. Uh, I think... 
Max might need a chop out, and we could do with a bit of a cultish goal kicking sure. ruck. Tunnel balling. Okay, right so are, are you implying that this was a serious uh, suggestion from you? I loved Fitzy, but yep. it wasn't exactly serious. Okay, okay. okay. That's okay. okay. That, that, That's that makes a whole lot more sense now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, where, where, are you, where are you calling us from, Kobe? Uh, I live in Sydney. Um, I moved up here seven years ago. Yeah. Um, living in Sydney, but I live in Bondi. I was gutted to hear that you oh. guys were in Manly. I wanted to yeah. wanted to take you to the local coffee shops, become all your best friends, oh, but that's it was shattering. the other side of town. Did you manage to get to one of the games? Yeah, I got to the Gold, uh, the Gold Coast game. It was cracking. One of the best footy experiences I've actually ever had. Wow, I, I, about- I was amazed at how loud that crowd was at the Gold Coast game. Yeah, it was it was nuts. We were loud, and you could hear us. Yeah, Jake definitely. Melksham heard us, and that was very funny. Yeah, actually, there's a story around Jake Melksham. I think he had a bit of an argument with one of the fans. What are the odds? Not he very did, hard, and yeah. that and wasn't that wasn't you, Kobe. The crowd absolutely got behind Jake. And, oh, that's uh, good. He proved, he proved the doubter wrong when he kicked that goal. It was great. Yes, that's beautiful. Um, and obviously, no COVID restrictions yet in Sydney. Uh, but you are a teacher, so you'll be uh, waiting for the news, obviously, for whiff, whiff, whiff that. Yeah, yeah. We're, uh, we're waiting and looking. The numbers kind of tick up. We might be in lockdown soon, but fingers crossed um, we get to stay at school. Yeah. Stay out and about. Um, we did have Cam Pedersen on the podcast last week, and he's out in uh, Phillip Island, Phillip which is Island. down the bottom of Victoria. Um, and still able to teach yeah. at the moment, but he um, he might have some struggles going on. So uh, we do feel for everyone in the world. We're lucky enough to be up here in Sunshine Coast where there is no restrictions, although someone did come in a, a shipping container yesterday and apparently had the virus, but he's a Queensland All government right. looking after him. So I think we're okay, Kobe. Good. Good, good. good. All right, well, we, we, got, we got a trivia. Um, you can yep. win a 78 degree bottle of gin. That is the new sponsor. What a sponsor. We've well, got a new sponsor, way. Kobe, on board. It's a 78 degree bottle of gin. It's a beautiful gin. Do you like your gin? Uh, you, you don't have any uh, Zurich minis for me? Oh, we can chuck in some Zurich minis as well. You, <laughs> yeah. get the, you can have gin out of the Zurich minis. How does that sound? Perfect. But you have to get the five, yeah. obviously yeah, the five trivia all, questions right. It goes without saying. We need a good, we need a good showing from you in the trivia stakes. Um, and if if, the, right. if there are any, uh, if there's any Melbourne supporters out there that do want a 78 degree bottle of gin, uh, there is a discount code till the 31st of July, uh, 15% off. All you got to say is Can D's. Uh, in I'm guessing a little box when you buy it. It's a little discount code. It would have to be in a little box. Yeah. At um, the end of the at the end of the buying process. Correct. First question. Uh, yeah. How many current players on our list are from Tasmania? God's country. Current players from Tassie. Yes. Um, College Asmi. Wow, that's that's one. Oh. And there is, if you, I'll, I'll give you a clue. There's one more, but you got to name it. That would be the harder what? of the two that you just got in, from my perspective. The harder of the two. He's currently um, playing. Because one would be in the team right one's, now. Yes. One's currently playing. Oh, that's shocking. I don't know. Yeah. And did you like my buzzer noise in? I, th- I didn't know it was a buzzer to start with, <laughs> but I, I think we got there in the uh, end. It's Jay Lockhart. Jay Lockhart. Uh, right. Okay. Uh, question two. We had Hamish from Hamish and Andy on the podcast before. Um, unfortunately, you're on hold, so you didn't get to listen to it. But um, <laughs> Hamish goes for Melbourne. Do you know who Andy goes for? Carlton. Well done. Get confident. Good to confident. I like that. Um Angus has three brothers. Two of them play football. Uh, do you know who they play for? Uh, West Coast and Freo. Well done. Also confident. Yes, confident. Do you know who? Uh, what the third brother does? Is he in the army? Oh, jeez. That makes up for the first question. You're three from three. <laughs> well done. This? this is unreal. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> this, is a, this is a question with a bonus point. Uh, right. Where are we currently based? Is the question? Um, Marucci door. And in the bonus point is, can you be a little bit more specific? The hotel. Oh no. That's uh, okay. we're in, Sorry. <laughs> we're, in, we're in the Novotel Twin Twin Waters. That's okay. I didn't have anything anything for you if you got the bonus point. So that would have been that would have been <laughs> that would have actually been spooky. Not only do you know the three uh, occupations of my brother, you know the hotel we're staying. In, so I'm yeah, almost actually. glad you didn't get that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last question. Uh, who debuted in round one this year? Uh, remember, round one was before the isolation period. Uh, who debuted yep. in round one this year? But we haven't seen play since. 
who debuted in round one? There's two of them. One of them debuted for the club. Debuted for the club is a distinction to make for one of them. Okay. Um, Maybe both of them. Brown. Brown is one. Debuted for the club. Yep. And can you get the other one? Round one and hasn't played since. Mitch Brown. Yep. And the other player was his AFL debut. Then he hasn't played since. Was it? AFL. Yes, it was. Yep. Sorry, it was. We've yep. just confirmed our fact checker. <laughs> um, Sparrow played last year. I don't think he played. No. Um, I like this. Like, game. like the process. I like the process. It's definitely not Sparrow. Yeah, he is in Sparrow's draft year. Ooh. Um, was it James Jordan? Oh, he should have. No. To be fair, he's in some really good form, James Jordan. But it was Toby, Toby Bedford. Bedford. But that's half Toby a half Bedford. mark, and that that's half a half mark. And a four and a half up. out of five means you're getting a bottle of gin and some yeah, zero cups. cups. Four and a half rounds up to five. It always rounds up. So well done. That was unreal. So what we'll do, Kobe, is we'll get we'll get uh, your details somehow. Um, I don't think that's great on air uh, content. <laughs> so we potentially might call you back. But thanks for being part of the show. Um, and yeah, thanks. I'm presuming you're on your lunch break in, as a teacher right now. So thanks for squeezing us in. No, you beauty. Thanks, boys. Good days. Good man, Kobe. Good stuff. And that wraps us up just about, Maxie, doesn't it? Yeah, that does. That does wrap us up. Uh, not much me and you time there. We had a lot of callers. We had a jam-packed podcast. I think we got a long way over. That's okay. It was all quality. Um, next week, it may be you here again. Uh, well, we'll let the people decide. I'm excited to see what the answer is because I do have maybe a McDonald brother waiting as a second option. Yeah, I mean, we like... Lo- I think that's going to help your case if I say that I'm yeah, going to bring exactly. Tom McDonald in. They'll come say, we don't want Tom McDonald. Anyone but. Anyone yeah. but. So keep, keep Angus on. I'll see you next week then see you next week good man good stuff